Hello, everyone. Hello, 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 hello. Um, as you may know from the name of, of the video, my name is Mikhail Alexinko, and uh, I'm going to be playing um, a Banter Bleeds to promote uh, uh, my new course for Chessable uh, about the initiative. So uh, let me accept some of your challenges, challenges only from premium users. So let's, let's do this one. E4, I was told that's a good move. E4. Mm -hmm. A player from Turkey. E5. Okay, knight f3 is another good move, right? And let's go Rui Lopez, classic stuff. A6. And I'm playing this relatively boring line and I'm going to castle here. D4 is one of the moves. E takes D4, queen takes d4 so i gave two bishops away but i have a pawn majority on the king side oh ouch that's one tasty pawn on g7 <sighs> what do i do on queen f6 i keep winning material with some forks okay which one do i take Not afraid of one check on the G file. It's not a big deal. Now I need to finish my development. Maybe I'm gonna start with the check to have King F1 just in case. And then let me play a four C. I oh, know Bishop G5, no good. Let's just develop pieces. I have full piece up. Check, King goes to F1 now. In the end game, you gotta go to the center with your King. Knight goes to H5. Where is it going? I have no clue. Mm, let me develop my bishop. I want my rook on d1, so let me just go bishop e3, followed by rook d1. All my pieces would be ready for action. f5, rook d1, now c5 is hanging. Okay, and now it's time to attack. Let's say rook d5, and I attack the pawn. There's a weak pawn on d6, weak pawn on f5. I'm gonna double rooks now. Who's gonna protect the d6? Okay, how do I keep my initiative? Let's keep, let's, let me see, bishop g5, rook g6, rook f5, my g7. Mm, I have bishop f6 in the worst case. Bishop g5, four sync moves, just, I'm just attacking. Or maybe bishop e7, next move would be better. Instead of rook takes f5. Okay, that's my pawn, thank you very much. Okay, knight to g7, rook goes to f7. I need more active, oh, rook to f6 was a boring way to go. Rook g6, I'm gonna take on g7 and exchange some pieces, although maybe I can aim for checkmate. Let's say in rook g6, knight d5. Uh, I wanna give a checkmate here, so let me put the knight here. c4, rook c7 is my plan. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. I can see the chat. They say there's a problem with the board. I hope there's no problem. Knight goes to e8. Okay, now a fork on e7. Fork on e7. Let's see. King goes here. Let's take the rook. Okay, let's just finish this one quickly. Okay, next challenge. Next challenge. Let's go with. 2455 and now I'm black. Sabo Pasha from Turkey. Let's go Sicilian. Let's play some open dynamic chess, which is all my course is about. How do I do that? Let me do this. I'm not sure if it's a good move, but I like to have a pawn in the center. Oh, do they do it? Okay, go d6. I want to hold on to my pawn. Okay, maybe I should have studied this one better. Never analyze this one. How do I hold my pawn on e5? I don't see how I can do that. Mm. Yeah, I don't like what I did here. I do not like what I'm doing. 
G6 maybe? I think I can do that. G6 and Bishop G7. I might be very much wrong about it. Knight G7. Takes, now I pin. And okay, he should have protected the bishop and then I cannot take it back. I think now I just castle. And then on the next move, I will take the pawn and restore the balance. Don't like playing without increment. Please challenge me with increment. There's no serious tournament out there without increment, except maybe the first Bunter Blitz series. But after that, they added increment, and I'm very grateful for that because this is much more the chess that we all know and appreciate than pre-moving faster than your opponent. That's that's the kind of skill that I'm not sure where else you can you can use. The skill that you need is to play good chess. Yeah, so this stream is cooperation of Chess24 and Chessable, my first course uh, for Chessable about initiative. And uh, it's a collection of my thoroughly analyzed games of, uh, of myself, um, where you can learn a lot about how to play in open positions. Keep the initiative, maintain the initiative, increase your initiative, and so on. So what do I do here? I want to go h6, and then I want to go queen d7. Or knight c4, I go queen c7. So I have two bishops. So eventually I have to open up the position, and it seems like f5 is the right way to go for me, but I need to complete my development first. Queen c7, rook d8. This is the moves that I'm going to play. King h7 is a useful move. Put the knight on d4. So let's go. That's why I played h6. I want to have queen c7 and not be bothered with uh, uh, with uh, the knight g5 stuff. So let's just complete the development. e5 is protected. Knight d4, king h7. I already gave you the list of moves. Okay, let's go king h7. Prophylactics. From what? Not 100% sure, but usually that's a good sequence. So a next move, and now let's take, put the knight right here. If knight takes, which pawn do I use? I can use the e pawn to improve my bishop, or I can use the c pawn and then go a6, b5, and completely switch to the queen side. Maybe I'll do that, because now I see a weak pawn on c2. a5. Mm. I think that helps. I think that helps. Takes, takes. b5 is now almost unstoppable. Bishop a3, I just move the rook. F5 is still in the air for me. Although so far I want to go B5, put the knight on A3, and then it would be completely passive. Mm, and now I just need to protect this pawn. I don't want to use my queen. It's below queen's duty to protect some silly pawn. Mm, B4, knight, C4 secures the pawn. So let me just play this move. What do I do next? I think f5 now looks reasonable. So the pieces are paralyzed on the, maybe doubling crooks on the a file would work, but I wanna play on both sides of the board. Let me push. And now I'm switching to the king side again. Um, let's say bishop f6, bishop h4. Ooh, okay, missed that one, g5. Takes, takes. And then I'm gonna use the g file to win the game. Now my bishop goes here, and then it goes to g3, and then I take on h3, and then I take on f1, and then my queen come closer. And uh, what else? Um, how do I win this in the best way? Rook a8, suddenly I'm attacking from that side. There's no checks, take on a3. Takes, queen takes, check. I swap queens, let's play, ah, okay. That's the problem with pre-moving, you see? That's that's why I don't, I don't like that. Don't like that at all. Okay, next challenge. Let's see. 
Let's see. Anyone with increment, which I asked for. Okay, let's do this one. Let's do this one. Premium user on them from Spain. Let's go D for now. So my course about initiative for Chessable. You can watch the free sneak peek video or peek inside video. And if you like what you see, you can go ahead and purchase. If not, it's your call. That's fine. No, no. Okay, so I'm gonna abort the game and I'm gonna accept some other challenge. Let's do this three plus two. Oh, now I'm black, okay. Come on. Okay, now let's go E5. Five. Knight F3, Knight C6, Rui Lopez, maybe. Okay. Italian it is. Okay. Let me see. I'm going to take. I'm going to do. Hold on a second. What's the line I want to play? What is the line that I want to play here? That's actually a good opening to play in Blitz. Because um, not so many people are studying it. And um, for example, I again forgot, like every time I got in trouble in Evans Gambit, I open my file and I'm like, so what did I have to play there? And I'm like, oh, I forgot, <laughs> I forgot. So uh, it's a good idea to study some. And actually, Evans Gambit, I wouldn't call it dubious. I always thought that that would be a dubious opening, to be honest. Uh, for some reason, that was, I thought like if you run your stockfish for certain amount of time, uh, it would just tell you where black is winning or has huge advantage. Apparently not. Apparently, it does not win d7, I think. Is some... So it's not like some, some dubious opening that you lose if you play. No, it's a decent opening. So that's a good call for, for blitz or maybe rapid. For classics, not so much. People would see that you're playing it, right? Takes, hold on, what did they want to do? I want to go knight a5. Isn't it what they do it here? I think it is. Or maybe I just completely confused it with something else. Hold on, uh, aren't I queen b4, c5, queen b5, queen b5. Okay, so my opponent is ready to play the end game. Let's see. c6, c5 doesn't win. I can swap queens and go c6, bishop goes away, and then I take on e5 and we play the end game. Yeah, let's do that. Let's play the, the end game. Bishop moves back, d3 maybe. And now I take. And now I develop my knight to a nice square on f6. Bishop a3, ah, still playing in the, in the style of, uh, of the opening. So I'm not gonna take on e4. Although rook e1 is not possible. Yeah, why not? I'm gonna take. You don't have bishop b3, you don't have rook e1, you cannot develop your knight. It's usually a poisoned pawn if there's rook e1 move, but that's not the case. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, I did want to take because I know that usually it's, uh, it's the problem. Apparently it's not. To do, to do, to do, to do, to do, c4. Okay, so now I can go knight c5 and ask for some exchanges, or I go bishop d4 and just win. Let's do that. Let's instead of playing passive chess, I'm gonna attack, 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 and that's exactly what the course is all about. It's not there was a little bit of tactics there because you cannot play. 
well in open positions or active chess and maintains the initiative without calculating variations. But there are so many situations where it's just there's no win. Just like here, this is the win. But what do you do if there's no win? What do you calculate? When do you stop? Uh, which moves do you prioritize? Mm, what are the helpful guidelines in open positions? So all of that you'll find in my first and definitely not the last course for Chessable. So thank you very much for the rook. <laughs> then I'm going to take the knight on d2. And then, uh -huh, okay. So I was planning to take on e5. And the rook takes f6, f4. I'm, I have so much material that I can afford yeah, I don't want to get checkmated like knight d2. That looks checkmate to me. Although any check with the knight, I'm going to go bishop e6. But then knight c6, knight a5, discover check. I don't want to do that. So let me just take the knight. Rook takes, let me protect it. f4, let me develop the bishop with the tempo and then castle long. And now that's it. Rook e2 was slightly better because at least the knight would be protected and now that's it thank you takes let's say i take game over game over what openings and defenses are included in the initiative course in chess none <laughs> because the uh, what I'm teaching in the course is uh, the general guidelines, not the specific lines in it. It's not an opening course. Uh, it's a collection of my games uh, where I analyze them thoroughly and explain why I made this decision, why that, why this decision was wrong, and you get to learn it. And of course, I'm going to discuss the openings that happened in those games, but it's not the opening course. I read the question from the Chess 24 um, chat. Okay, so Bobby Fisher doesn't want to play. All right, let's see. Who else is here? Uh, let me see. Let's see. Let's do this one. Uh, C4, I haven't played today yet. Siddhartha chess from Germany. Okay, let's go knight f3, develop some pieces. Let's see. e6. Okay, develop another knight. If d5, it's capture, and we're. Oh. I'm so bad with names when it comes to openings, it's embarrassing. Yes. Okay. Dubo was playing capture and bishop c5. What do I do here? Uh, let's see. Let's see. I'm going to develop my bishop. I don't remember. Apparently, uh, they breathed life into this opening one more time from Karpov, Kasparov times. I think it was considered not so good, but maybe I'm just wrong. Maybe I'm just wrong. So I'm supporting my center. I'm going to give up this bishop on g5, and I'm going to uh, focus all of my attention on the pawn on d5. OK, so how does black hold the pawn on d5 if I go knight d2? I don't know. Knight e4 doesn't work. Knight d2. Now the pawn on d5 is hanging. Knight e4, I take on e7, then take on e4, and then c4 pawn is falling. And yeah, so if I were to take on f6 first, there would be some knight e7 move that would hold, but it's not there yet. Bishop d3. Should I play Petrosian style? Give up an exchange? Uh, let me see, bishop f6 takes, takes knight d5, bishop f1, queen takes f1, uh, b5. Surprisingly, b5 would work. Interesting. Uh, 
If I go rook e1, it's going to be knight e4. Huh. Ah, okay, rook e1 is fine because d5 pawn would be hanging. Knight b4, okay. For some reason, I forgot about that move. Oh, that's a good move. That's a good move. So I just go rook c1 there. And I'm preparing a3. Yeah, it's not a very good move. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, d5 pawn is a major problem for black. So, what's up with that? Okay, 94. Where's my win? I want my win right now. Bishop e7 and a3. I know, bishop e7. Queen e7 takes knight c. Yes, that's the one. Bishop e7, knight c takes e4. And the pawn on c4 is saying bye-bye. Do I go a3 first? Yes, I do. Because the pawn was hanging. Knight a2 just loses the pawn. Although knight a2, okay, one c3 takes, takes, takes. No, that's a pawn. If knight moves, I take on c4. The bishop on d3 looks nice, but I don't think black can hold it. Knight a2, okay, that's creative. Let's see, let's go. I can take on c4 and try to win that knight. Uh, let's see if I can do that. Rook takes c4, takes, takes. I'm not sure if I can win it. Ah, yes, I can, queen b3. Okay, let's be creative too. Knight a2 is creative and I'm gonna play rook c4. That's a risky one because I didn't calculate it well. We'll see. My next move is queen b3, so black would have to go b5 and try to escape through c1. Oh, okay. Missed that one. Knight escapes through c1, so queen b3, b5, knight e5, knight c1, queen takes b5, knight d3. Not a win yet. So what do I do? Yeah, I'm going to go queen b3 anyway. With b5, I'm going to take that pawn. Queen e6 is a good move. b5 takes. Queen. For some reason, I want to go to a4. I don't know why, but then I could blunder knight b4. As long as I keep my knight on c4 with bishop f1, <clears throat> that should be a relatively easy win. Bishop f1, rook a1. I don't see what black can do about that. Bishop f1. Queen e6, rook a1, knight b4 takes. Rook takes c4, takes, takes. That should be technically winning. Capture on c4. Okay, now rook a1. There's no time to double rooks. It seems like knight b4 is the only move. I simply take it. Let me pre move that. Did I guess? <clears throat> oh, sorry. Okay. Let's see who's next. Okay, let's play without increment, uh, but five minutes is too long, I would say. Let's play some no increment. Let's do this. Oh, sorry. Except it was an increment. Anyway, I didn't play knight f3 today yet. Let's see how it goes. Uh, okay, let's go Sicilian then. And d4 is the correct move. I'm just joking. There are many moves. Knight c3, bishop b5, c3. Knight c3 is the only move in the position. e5. All right, really popular these days, Sveshnikov. Although in Russian, Ukrainian speaking part, it's called Chelabin variation because it was played in the city of Chelabin, Chelabinsk the first time, if I remember correctly. 
d6, the bishop goes here, although knight d5 is very popular. I like to stick to, to the well-known lines. Let's, mm, what do I want to play? I want to play knight d5. Then I want to take, then I'm going c4. It's not super open, but it may become very open. So um, what you will find in the course is that at least that's how I see a chess game. Uh, very often the game starts slow. Oh, is this the move? I don't think it's the move I take. You cannot take with the queen because of queen d6. Now you take with the pawn, which should be horrible. Okay. And can I take on b4? Should I do that knight b4, queen a5, a3, takes, 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 queen d2? No, I want to keep the queens because black's king is, has no safe place to be at all. So black's king is forever weak now. Let's go castle. Then queen d2 and f4, and I'm going to go for a checkmate. Queen d2 attacks a pawn. Pawn, oh. What if I take your pawn, bishop h3? Bishop h3 is the move. Okay, fine. I'm going to go f4 then. There's a check on b6 now. I should have played king h1 maybe. What was I talking about? Ah, so the game usually starts slow, but at some moment as pieces get developed and uh, get into the game, the tension rises. And at some moment, lots of calculation and active play and initiative is required. You need to grab the initiative, maintain the initiative, keep it alive, and then convert it to a full point. Or oh, what's that? What if I just take? You need to, you need to calculate well, but very often you just don't know what to calculate. And uh, what's this? Just giving up material. It is the best way to win. Just take it again. Thank you. Now the knight is hanging. I know black just collapsed in two moves. So the position was slow. The moment I played f4, enormous tension was created. And, uh, and that was it. All right. Should d7. What is the best way to win? Take, give, check. No, I don't want to take. I have an awesome bishop. Just take the pawn on d6. Forcing good looking forcing moves. Queen takes d6. I'm going to. Take that pawn, thank you very much. This is just one check. Oh, I had c5. <laughs> of course I had c5. And now, how do I win? There's check on f6. How do you win after that? Let's go c5 first. Why do you move the queen? And then queen f6, bishop c6 wins the game. Check. Takes on c6 and the rook on d8 is lost. All right. Three minute, no increment. Finally, let's, okay, I haven't played g3 yet this today. Bishop g2. Ah, okay, let's put the pawn in the center. Uh, let's do another one. It's not King Zindian yet because I didn't play c4. So I'm going to develop my knight here. I don't want to play c4. I want to go knight c3. Castle, castle. Do, 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 do. Knight c3, h3, bishop e3. Oh, c5. I don't think it's a good end game. I do not think it's a good end game. Knight d5 loses because of rook d1 pin. So knight has to go some awful square. Then I go f4 and that should be good for me. Or I go e6 and ruin the pawn structure forever. Let's do that. Now I have an outpost on e4, and what is the best way to develop my pieces? Let's do the knight first. Although usually the pawn belongs on c3 to stop that bishop and covers the d4 square. I should have done 
that. Okay, but let's just stick to the, the quick development. Just develop pieces with the tempo. Bishop f6, I lured the bishop into knight e4, would come with sort of with a tempo. Let me go bishop f4 now. But knight e4, bishop b2. I don't like that. Knight is going to d4, that's exactly what I was afraid of. Let's see, knight e4, bishop b2, rook b1, bishop moves, knight c5. And I attack with all my pieces. I like it. Let's do it. There were more boring ways to play this one, but I could have doubled two pawns. Bishop takes c6. Oh, e5. Poor bishop on f6. Poor, poor bishop. Okay. Bishop e3, knight d4 is clearly the plan. How do I address that? Do I give up another pawn? I don't think I have a choice. I don't think I have a choice. Hmm. Okay, bishop h6, knight d4, knight c3. Knight c2, rook c1, then I take on c5 and my knights start going in. Okay, I don't have that much time and there's no increment. It's a decent opponent, even though it says there's no title. Okay. Let's take it. B7 is now hanging. Rook goes to here. Takes, takes. B7 is falling. Takes. Mm. I do a5, going to c6 or b3, not sure yet. c6 looks good. Although I don't know where to go after that. Okay, let's exchange. Let's exchange a little more. Maybe giving up that bishop was not the best. Oh, decision. Let's see, takes, that's a blunder. Unfortunately for my opponent, that's it, okay. Come on. I'm not gonna blunder bishop e3 check, okay. Okay, that was a tough game. Tough game. Okay, let's do some other challenges. Oh, let's do 2600. Let's do that. Except, let back to e4. Great Phoenix from India, no title. Feel like I'm gonna lose some rating here. d4, e5, h5, e6 loses the bishop, although most people know that anyway, g4. f6, page 7 e6. Uh, two, 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 two. Let me see. Let me see. What is the proper way to go here? I completely forgot. Should not play lines that I don't remember well. Should not have done that. That was irresponsible. Blunders a pawn. Knight f3. I have some nice squares. Knight e3 would force me to capture it. No, knight e5 check would be possible. Do I give a check? Or what else can I do? Yeah, let's give a check. Yeah, I may lose this one. I haven't done tactics in a while. And this position requires enormous calculation. Takes, takes. Knight is hanging. Where does it go? Okay, my bishop is developed. Or maybe I can get away without calculation just by common sense moves. 
I'm one pawn down, but black is having a hard time developing the pieces. I cast a long, can then maneuver my knight to f4. Okay. My knight goes to, oh my goodness, that's what I was talking about. I just, it's embarrassing fork. Okay, where's my compensation? What, it's not there? Hmm, hmm, what do I do then? I don't know. Yeah, exchange and pawn down. That's tough, that is tough. Not exchanging queens, no, not today. Should have played queen c3. Just bother him with some pawns. No, I shouldn't. Rook a6, and I don't have a good follow up. Knight f4, bishop e7. Forces the exchange. Ah, but the king cannot castle, that is good. Horrible position. I don't know what to do. Oh my God, it's so bad. Let's go knight f4. B4, queen d3. F1. My g6 is coming. Let's take, let's put the knight on g6. And then is it c5 is the problem? Yes, yeah, c5 is the problem. Knight f4. Takes, takes. Let's go. Mm. Let's go. So weird. I don't see a threat. Rook d7, maybe. Maybe rook d7 is my next move. Mm. Let's take. Let's throw the pawn somewhere there. King d1. Rook d7. Am I getting checkmated? Rook c2. Is there a checkmate? I don't see a checkmate. Rook g7. Knight f6 is coming. Oof. Now checkmate is inevitable. Wow, I got lucky. Blundered everything, but my position was so good that I had compensation either way. That's, that's, oh wow, that was tough. Oh, that was really difficult. Okay. Let's take it easy a little bit. Let's play some, some games with increment. Let's do this, three plus two. E5. London system? Of course. Of course. It always is. Let's play some symmetrical boring line. Castle. Queen C7. Takes. Let's say take with the queen. What's the trick? Bishop d3. Yeah, I think that's the proper way to play it. Uh, what's my move now? 
I don't remember. Okay, let's just develop the knight to d7. Knight c6 would lose the game, so I have to go to d7. I'm just waiting for the castle, and then I can take on g3. Okay. That's a nasty one. Let's take. Oh, takes, takes, bishop g3, bishop h7. Is it losing? Is it losing Schwarzenegger King H7? No, it can't be. It can't be losing. I don't believe it. Okay, so the bishop is hanging. It has to move, I guess. Or Queen C2 or Queen E2. There could be a very dangerous attack. Oh, that's too passive, I think. Okay, is there a threat? No. Um, maybe I should create the threat. I can develop my bishop to b6, bishop b7, or go queen b6 and attack the pawn on b2. That's a risky strategy. Queen, oh, but let me try it. That's a dangerous pass to take. I should develop pieces or just simply play h6. For example, g4 now would be a big problem. For some reason, I forgot about g4. Queen b2, g5 takes on c3, king goes. Ouch. I have rook d8. Oh, b3. Okay. Then I'm not scared. Then I'm not scared at all. So let us put the rook to open file and then just go h6 to make sure I'm not getting checkmated. And now white has to castle short. Now I'm going to go bishop d7. That's a fine position for me. Knight e5. Okay, should d7 anyway. c3 is not protected, but I don't see how I can use it right now. Maybe queen a5 in some moment could be unpleasant for black, for white. g4. Okay. Now let's do the unpleasant move, queen a5. Just create a little tension. The knight on e5, the pawn on c3, I'm bothering my opponent. That's what you're supposed to do. You should bother your opponent in open positions. It's not that easy to protect that pawn. Queen e3, knight d5. b4, queen a3, or queen c7. b4, I think, is necessary. Queen a3, bishop b3. Cutting my queen off and b4, I'm gonna go queen c7. And then it's c4, so the pawn starts moving and I can, maybe that's the right way to go. b4, if queen a3, bishop b3, I don't see a follow-up. Or at least I distracted the bishop. And b4, queen c7, c4. I need to remove that knight from e5, but I don't see how to do it. But at least I distract my opponent from the attack. c4. A5 could be too slow. I can keep bothering with queen b6 or queen d6. Queen b6 or queen d6. Which one do I like? Queen d6, a3, queen d4. Hmm. This knight on e5 is good. A5, I can get checkmated with g5 on the h file. I should bother my opponent. I should bother him a lot. But I don't see how exactly. Okay, let's go queen d6. Let's just keep attacking. We'll see where it takes us. Oh, a3, queen d4, castle. Yeah. Then my queen would. What about queen d4? Isn't it a double attack? Some check on c3. Yeah, now my pieces walk in. Bishop b5 is the next move that should win. Maybe check first and then bishop b or bishop b5 now. Queen b5, queen e5, queen e2. Yeah, let's go. That's what initiative is all about. Just attack, attack, attack. Queen e3 is a good move. I didn't, I should have played check maybe. Although the end game I win the pawn. So that's good enough. See, all the last moves I played, all of them were forcing. And that's how I seized the initiative. Maybe they were not entirely correct but people collapse under, under pressure. And that's, oh, queen e3, I have knight g4 also. Although it brings too much tension to my position. I want to ruin the pawn structure and go rook d5. 
Yeah, let's do that. Takes takes rook d5. Just a series of very good forcing moves. And I'm winning some material. Knight f3, knight g4, bishop e4, rook moves back. Oh, there's no increment. Okay. E4. Where do I move my rook? I want to keep the possibility of doubling my rooks. So I go to d7. Rook d1. Isn't it losing something? No, it's not. Okay. Let's jump with the knight. Another forcing move. Okay. Maybe not the best one. Takes, takes. No. Yeah, I should not have completely missed king f2, to be honest. I don't like what I did here. Takes, takes, and knight d4 is coming. Is it dangerous? I would pin him, but then king e1. Yeah, let's take. Now let's just move the king to the center. Yeah, I lost the initiative here. King e3, king e7. Yeah. Rook a1. Yeah, that doesn't look good. Bishop a4. Knight d2. Rook to open file. Bishop back to b5, maybe. Oh, knight d6. Why did I forget about that move? That's embarrassing. B5 is, what am I doing? I'm just winning on time. That's, that's what I'm doing. B5 was just, B7 was hanging. I just played bad, but I'm going to win just because of time. Just come in with the rook. Let's just get an open file. Oh. Taking my precious pawn. That's not cool. Key four check. How do I win? Rook F four check. And rook G four check. That's it. Okay. Oh, it was with increment. Ah, so I had all the time in the world. Okay. Yeah. Come on. It's time to resign. I will not let you stalemate yourself that's the last chance by the way a lot of people forget about that last chance stalemate they relax you know i'm just winning why isn't he she resigning uh, that's the kind of attitude okay that was tough that was a tough call let's do this one agm wood from india c4 Okay, let's go King's Indian. Oh, I forgot to check whether I'm playing only premium users. That's my bad. Should have checked that. This is a premium user. Premium users exclusively. Okay. Yes, and this Panther Blitz is in the promotion of my course on initiative at Chessable. I'm also a premium coach at coachess.com, which is very closely related to Chess24 and to Chessable. Coach has changed 24 Chessable, all excellent platforms. Now it goes back to B8. That's one of the lines. The idea is apparently it's so useful to force uh, the uh, d5 that that black can afford to lose two tempos. It's amazing. All right. Now my knight goes to d7. And then I'm going f5. In some lines, if white is doing a3 and b3, I have knight b6 ideas but it's not working yet. So let's just let me put the pawn on f5 right there. For example, if takes takes f, ooh. Ugh, I don't like this move. It runs into a4, knight c5, f4. So typical sacrifice would be f4 here. Let me see if it's working. Sounds like if it's working, it's, yeah, okay. I don't see how it can work. A4 doesn't work. F4 takes. Oh, 
let's be creative. Let's let's just do it. Just do it, as Nike is saying. It's very typical. And now I don't know what's my follow-up. I, I wanted to do this. Knight takes c5, it's knight takes c5, bishop takes d takes. And I'm claiming that I would have uh, compensation on dark squares because the position is opening up. Although white has a chance to block the position as bishop takes f5. And if f5, maybe I capture, maybe I don't. Maybe I just go for the checkmate, which is queen h4, bishop h6. Because if I take, I lose control over the e4 square, which I don't like. But uh, let's, oh, knight b5 is another problem for me. Knight b5 is coming. So queen h5, knight b5 would be really unpleasant. And queen goes to g3, so my attack is not working. So let's just take the pawn. Let's just take the pawn. I'm not one pawn down. The position may open up very soon. Oh, rook e1. My opponent is not afraid of f4. He should be. And now rook a6, rook g6 should just win the game. Ooh. Let's go rook a6. My rook is coming for the h2 pawn. Uh, h6 or g6, let's go h6. I just need my bishop on a7, g1 diagonal, although I don't know how I can pull that one off. Okay. What do I do? Let's just do another rook and then we'll see. Bishop f8 would secure my queen side. Okay, I don't care about the pawn on a5. Maybe I should, but I don't. No, I think after queen h4, it's gotta be it. Looks like a checkmate to me. Although queen a, no, no way, no way. It cannot be the case. No way. Cannot believe it's not the checkmate. Queen h2, king f1, queen h1 is not a checkmate. I need my bishop and I cannot protect my bishop. Oh my goodness, I have to, what? Oh, king's Indian attack failed me. Ah. Queen d8, I'm just losing. Oh my goodness. Okay, I have to take king f1. And uh, is it rook h? No, rook h3 loses the rook. It's horrible. Can't believe I'm not winning. I may be just losing. That's terrible. It's just terrible. I really don't know what I'm doing here. I don't see how I can give a checkmate. It's unbelievable. It's even knight c7 is winning. Wow. It looks like a checkmate, but it's not. Awful, rook e6, knight e6, resign. Oh my God, I lost. <laughs> There's no way around it. I'm just losing, rook h3. Just completely lost. Do I have increment? I'm not sure, how do I check what, I don't know. Ah, the d4 square is under control. So I am losing. I thought I have queen d4 check. No, that's it. That's game over. Good game, AGM Wood. That's just resignable. The queen is hanging. And mate is coming. Yeah, you can check mate. It felt like such a good attack. I should have just, just protected the pawn on a5. I underestimated the... Uh, I overestimated my attack. Let me put it this way. So there you go. Grandmaster being checkmated uh, in 30 moves.
All right. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's. I want increment. Without the increment, yeah, I feel like it. I would play horrible chess. Let's stick to D for now. Norway. Okay. Hello, the land of the champions. Oh, it's a premium user. I keep forgetting that I have to play premium users. Yeah, the games become harder and harder, so I don't have time to read the chat. Apologies if you, uh, if I missed an interesting question or two. Uh, Knight C3. C6, I don't think you can do that. I go E4. You will not get your D5. You have to go D6. Well, in some sense it can transpose, but maybe I move my knight to E2. If you go D6. Let's try and do that. Although very often this knight would be horribly placed in case, uh, in case black goes E5. So far, I'm just, I got the center and I'm developing my pieces. Queen C7. Okay, let's just show off a little bit four pawns in the center okay now i want to give a checkmate how can i do that let's go take stakes and f5 h3 g4 is my plan and i think it's very hard for black to get to the it's just one check is it just one check? So I have to go king h1, knight g4. Mm, it's not just one check. The knight comes to e3. Do I have knight a4, knight g2, knight b6, knight e1? So queen e1, knight e3, removing one of my precious bishops. Although I have knight a4, knight g2, knight b6, knight e1, knight a8, knight d3, and maybe my knight can escape. Let me see, knight a4, knight g2, knight b6, knight e1, knight a8, knight d3. Let's say bishop e3. Yeah, let's go. Knight a4. If queen a6, we just exchanged, so that's fine. Knight g2 makes sense. And I win in exchange, but maybe my knight would be trapped. Maybe I can give it up for some material back. Takes. Oh, there's knight c2 move that I forgot. Okay, it's not too late to take on d7, and that's a horrible endgame. So I'm just going to go all in with knight a8. Usually those knights do not escape. Yeah, I've completely blundered this knight c2. I thought knight d3, and then I go to e3, and then maybe my knight, but knight c2 is a great move. Okay, so let's see how I can escape with my knight. Knight c7, bishop, let's just, just try escaping now. Bishop b7, I have rook d1. Uh, rook d1, knight f6. Let's go rook d1. That's one good looking forcing move. Oh, knight d4. Okay, that should not be good because I will have f4 square for myself. Let's see. Although black gets the e5 square. Hmm. Still, my knight cannot escape. Take on g6. So let's just take. 
put the bishop on f4. And in order to trap the knight, black would have to put something on e5, but then the d4 pawn is hanging. So I'm going to take the pawn. And oh, c5, no good. Rook c8 seems better. Now rook d5. Uh, takes, and which one do I use? The c pawn or the e pawn? The e pawn loses the pawn. Knight takes, I lose the pawn on c8. Oh, but I can, oh, I would block his bishop on knight c4. I have f6 with a check knight. That's nice. That is nice. F6 is going to win right now. Knight d7 seems like it's the only move to not resign. Knight d7 only move, but then there are no threats. I have a healthy extra pawn. That should be a relatively comfortable win. Although the bishop on g7 is really good. So what do I do about that? Mm -hmm. Let's just put the rook on open file with a threat. That cannot be a horrible move. Okay. Bishop h6, rook e8. I don't have my traps. Knight e7. Let's go knight e7 check. I wanted to go knight e6, knight c6. And now the bishop is in trouble. Knight c5. Let's just take. What do I do next? I have two pawns up, but my central pawn is hanging. I need to activate my rook. Do I stick to my pawns? With, and let's just play boring chess, e5. Do I have an increment? Oh, yes, I do. OK, that's good. Bishop g5. Exchanging pawns usually favor weaker side. So maybe I should not have done that. In the retrospect, bishop f4. Two checks. And he takes my pawns. Yeah, I screwed up a little bit. OK, I go to f3. I want to push my h pawn, but then I lose two pawns. If I go to h3, it's too passive. Hmm. I don't like what I did here. King h3, rook d2. I had such a winning position. Now, now I have trouble. King to the center. Knight d3, bishop c3. Dominating a little bit that knight. h4. King f3. Bishop to d4. Now king goes, for, oh, knight on a4 is complete. It was a bad move, just push the pawn. Okay, now my c pawn promotes. Game over. Whew. Okay, this takes. Why take? I can promote the queen. Okay, that was a tough game. Yeah, either the opponents are getting stronger or I'm getting weaker. Oof. Okay, only um, okay, let's play Norway again. Hello, Lucas. d5. I don't want to play King's Indian. I lost a game. I don't like it. Aha, uh -huh, okay. So you're doing this. You're doing this one. Okay. b3, b6. Let's see. Bishop goes to b7. Bishop goes to d6. Why? I don't remember. I do not remember. Castle, castle. Usually the idea was to push, oh, okay, a3, knight b5 was coming, so I had to do something about that. Um, knight goes to d7. I think I have a pleasant position. I don't want to go c5, although I maybe should. 
Yeah, let's let's just develop my queen and connect the rooks. Knight d4, knight h4, I meet with g6. And that should be fine. That should be fine. That should be fine. Rook e1. Okay. So let's just put the rook to open file. I'm prepared. So so far there are no forcing moves, right? We're just preparing each uh, for for the fight. White is maneuvering. I'm maneuvering. Now I feel like I need to go c5 to get some space. Okay, let's go c5. And my plan was c4 followed by b5. But let me see if takes takes e4 is not possible. I can do that if it's if it's possible that I'm lost. So I, I need to double check. Hmm. C4 takes takes e4 is not possible. I just take. I just take and bishop. So c4. Takes takes knight d2 could be too. Let's go c4. That's a risk, one risky strategy. So I'm hoping, so see, now the position can open up in a second. B takes, D takes. Let's remove that one. My bishop opens up the center, the tension, just boom. Although two moves ago, it was slow. So to play better in such positions, not sure how on YouTube, there's a link in the description, but you can just go to Chasable and see. It's uh, on the promotion, my course, for a few more days, I think. Okay. So what's happening now? My next move is b5. I I have a little, I sunk, oh, e4 now. Interesting. Knight takes e4, b takes c4, and I'm pinned. D takes e4, b takes e4, and I am pinned. But then I move my queen. Where does that knight go? And then I have bishop h2 that should win. So I'm going to take. I would move my queen to d8. And then e4 is for knight. If knight moves, bishop h2 have to be winning. It's just no way it's not. OK. Just no way. Takes knight g4. King g6, king g3, no, queen g5, knight e4, bishop takes, knight takes, rook takes, no way, knight, knight, bishop h2, king h2, knight g4, king g3, queen g5, knight e4, bishop takes, knight takes, rook takes, rook takes, knight check, no, I just, I just don't believe, let's just go, I just don't believe, it should be a win. There's king g3. Is queen c7 working? King g4, knight f6, king h3. If my rook was not on c8, that, that square would be available for my bishop. Okay, I'm just going to focus and think. I don't see the win. I do not see the win. It's unbelievable. I don't see the win. Oof. Let's just do this. Just I don't know. I just want to open my bishop. I haven't calculated it well.
I still don't see the wind, by the way. If anyone cares. Now bishop c8 is coming. Now I see the win. Okay, still not finished, g4. <laughs> okay, wow, okay. Whew, that was a tough, that was a very tough game. Very, very tough. It looks like 25 moves and I won, but that was really, really tough. Good game, Lucas. Something to analyze, by the way. These are kind of combinations that Stockfish can occasionally overlook, by the way. Uh, bishop to h2. Wow, okay. Whew. I don't know how much time we have left, but okay. A few more games. All right. I need, I need a less rated opponent. All right. So about three more games to go. Let's do this one. <clears throat> Blunder Panda from, from Austria. Hello, Austria. I've been to Vienna recently. Okay, recently it's, <laughs> yeah, not very recently. So let's just go, what do we do? Let's just go Pirk. Again, I didn't check the premium, but hopefully only premium users are offering stuff. Okay, the bishop goes to g7, and that's a normal Pirk castle. c6. Really? Is that what they do here? Takes? Really? Knight d5? Yeah, I'm not a Pirk player, just play d6. Vladimir Onishchuk is a Pirk player. He's an expert in this line, in all the lines. Knight e4. Just throw the bishop to g4. And let's just attack the pawn on e5. I don't see how white can keep it together. c4 maybe, knight c7. Rook takes, queen takes, rook takes. Bishop f4. Takes, takes, knight e6, knight e. I think I'm winning the e5 pawn. Although there's bishop g5 move. I'm not sure what to do after bishop g5. Yeah, takes, takes bishop g5, king f8. But what if bishop g5 now? Yeah, that's a good move, bishop g5 now. I hope my opponent is not listening. Or with a certain delay. I don't see what to do on bishop g5. Bishop f4, okay. Not afraid of this one. My knight goes to e6 with a tempo. And then my knight goes to d7, just develop pieces. And then I take on f3 and take on e5. I don't see what white can do about that. I accept this move, of course, but I have knight d4 fork, so I'm going to take. I can pre-move knight d4. And then I'm... Oh, queen b7 looks too risky, giving up king side for nothing, actually. Knight f3, knight e5. Oh, no way. Okay, that's desperation, I would say. I have rook b8, rook b2, but I want to take on f3 and then take on e5. Do I include rook b8? Queen a7, takes, takes. If I take on f3, take on e5. There's rook d1. Where does my queen go? a5. It's not entirely obvious to me that how good that position is. Now I have to take that bishop for sure. Knight e5 may give the initiative to white. I would rather... Knight e5, rook d1, queen a5. There's b7, 
four? No, it's fine. Queen goes to the king side. If rook d1, knight f3 loses, I think, yeah. So, but otherwise queen a5 and then queen knight f3, queen is coming there. So I think white has to take. And then I would have a very powerful bishop. So we have even material, white's king is compromised. But when you're playing against the knight, you never know. Queen c6, okay. Queen needs to go to the queen side. Uh, I can take the pawn on b2, but I don't like it. Let me just develop the rook with a tempo. And then queen b5 maybe is the move. Queen b5. Then I go queen c7, attack the h2 pawn, and a little bit the c4 pawn, and a little bit the b2 pawn, queen c7. Now rook b8, bishop h2 are the threats. Maybe a6 in some lines. I want my queen on h. Oh, rook c1. Okay, thank you for the pawn. Bishop goes to f4 with another tempo. Rook c2, I think, is necessary. And all I need is my queen should come to h2, and then I win. But the rook goes to h4. Oh, maybe I kick the knight with f5. But it will always go to g3. Maybe I don't checkmate here. Interesting. How do I keep attacking? Rook b1, queen c5. b1, queen c5. I don't see how I can attack the king, which is weird. Which is very weird. I don't want to go to the end game because I will not create past pawns. So just rook to open file. I, I don't know what's next. I don't know what's next. I need to find a target. Okay, H1. My king doesn't feel so comfortable. Can I go F5, knight G3? It's a little risky with queens on the board, but what's life without a little fun and danger? Knight g3, I want to go rook d3. Then I'm going to double rooks. And then I'm going to take on g3 and come to d2. Let's see. It's like very shaky. H, I was afraid of this. Is it working? No way. Takes, takes. H7 is hanging. All right. Hmm. But this isn't checkers. I have intermediate moves. For example, rook b8. Is it working? Is it twerking? It may be twerking. Rook b8, knight h6, I just take. If queen goes anywhere, I take the knight. It seems to work, rook b8. Where does the queen go? Queen a6, I have knight e7, but I take my rook as protected with the bishop from f4. Okay, now it's winning, okay. What is the best way to convert? Keep all the pieces protected. So rook to f8, and then attack on f3, and queen g5 should win the game. Oh, queen g5 won on the spot, why? Okay, that's desperation. Should just take. Okay, it was a good game. I like this game. All right, one point in rating. I will not get my rating back for sure. Okay. E4. No? You don't want to play? Too bad. Who else is there? Let's see. Let's do Shabba. Again, let's try e4. Shabba from Germany. Oh, it's not, it's not a premium user. Ah, sorry, I don't know how to abort the game. Okay, let's just play. Apologies for that. Um, bishop c4, c3, 
D4. That's my bad. That's my bad. Bishop A5. Let's see what is the correct way to go here. Tum tum tum. Castle. I think it's castle. Takes takes takes. Queen D7. Or maybe I messed up. We'll see. <laughs> Bishop takes, pawn takes. Or maybe I didn't mess up. Maybe I'm entirely correct. I have two bishops and a nice center and I'm gonna attack on the king. King h2, rook g1, f4, f5, bishop d3. Uh, so what do I do now? King h2. With g6, I go rook g1. Knight e7. Okay. Do I go to h5? Yes, I do. My course is not about attacking the king. It's about a dynamic play in an open position. So... It would not have, hold on, let me see. Okay, there were some uh, threats to the king, but mostly it's about how to navigate any sharp open position where there is no immediate win, where you cannot uh, you're find a winning combination, where you just, you just have to play. What do you do there? Do you know how to think? Do you know which moves are usually better than the others, broadly speaking. If not, you can check my course. H5, that's how badly my opponent wants to get rid of queens. Okay, so what do I do about that? I can go to G3. Yeah, just go, just improve my pawn structures and we can exchange queens. And then we can talk. I don't know what's my next move. Bishop g3, probably my next move would be. Bishop d3, sorry. Or f4. No, f4, knight, f4. f4 could be my next move. Yes, only premium users. I should have saw that one. Shabba, please uh, get the premium account. Uh, because I will get in trouble for this. I'm just kidding. But get the premium account, please. Okay, so what do I do? F4, king takes, or g takes h4, knight takes no. Uh, g4, knight f4, I don't think I would get rid of those knights. Okay, so what do I do then? Let's go f4 and take king takes. Black is trying to build some sort of fortress on, for example, my bishop on e3 is not so good. So my bishop goes to d3, black would have to go f5. So bishop goes here, black has to go f5 or g6, but it's not a long-term solution. g6 knight to f5, that could be a solution. And then my king would, my bishop would have, look, so king goes to f3. And then my bishop should go around to a3. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yes, black wins the f5 square. That's for sure. Bishop c1, bishop a4, and bishop a3. That would be my setup. I'm not 100% sure why, but I don't see any other good place for my bishop. Knights are dangerous in, in Blitz. I would call it black has two knight advantage right now. <laughs> because for Blitz, the knights are so nasty. You never know when you're going to blunder a fork. Rook here. Rook here. 
let me provoke some weaknesses. Okay, and now where does, maybe I just attack the D5 pawn. That should do the trick, I suppose. So bishop goes to B1 and to A2. This is just one check. Where do I go? Do I go forward? No, I just go here, where nobody can give me a check. That sounds good. How is black going to hold the d5 pawn? I would have, hold on, this wouldn't be the, uh, the Rubinstein or what's the name of the composite, like these two bishops on two diagonals aimed at the king. That's usually one of the central diagonals, but okay, there's knight e6, but I have a five, king h7, okay. So let's go bishop a2. And now it seems that d5 is falling. All I need is to secure my f4. Knight goes here, let's just do it with a tempo. And then take with the rook or with the bishop. I don't see a big difference. Oh, but the knight is hanging, come on. Oh, you're not resigning, okay. Mm. Let's do f5, let's have some fun with it. Okay, and not sure if maybe one more game I have time for. That's a premium user, although I didn't, I wasn't too careful with this dangerous right from Croatia. Let's play some symmetrical line and this would probably conclude this stream. Knight bd7, solid, solid stuff, bishop e7. Boring, solid stuff. Okay, h6, let's say. Let's say I castle, what do you do? And let's say I go c5 now. One of the lines that black can do here. Oh, really? I don't think you can do that. Let's say I take, let's say I take again. Oh. Going for isolated pawn. Okay. Okay. Knight b6. Let's exchange some pieces. Let's exchange bishop d3, knight f to d5. But you have to keep your bishop. You, know, you cannot give up the white. Oh, knight bishop e2. Interesting choice. Knight here, anyways. Queen takes. And let's just develop some pieces. Bishop d7, rook d8, and rook c8. Let's go, do I go knight f4? No, rook c8, pinning. Queen b3. Queen b3 could be the move. a3, interesting. So I can go bishop a4, but I don't see why is it useful. Going with the bishop to b3. Okay, let's try doing that. Oh, there's knight d5 moves that I blundered. Knight takes d5. I'm almost losing. Oh my goodness. No, I have e takes d5, but oh my god, I should see moves like knight d5. That would be awesome if I were losing after knight d5. Oh my god. Whew. Should have seen that one coming. Okay. So I have knight f4. I want to take that bishop. I don't like that bishop. Mm, or maybe I put four sync moves. I'm just attacking. I'm trying to seize the initiative. With every move, I'm trying to improve my position. Knight d5, knight d5, and then I go to c2 most likely. So I have slight advantage because with isolated pawn, uh, white should be attacking the king usually, and that's not happening as you can see. All right, so what do I do now? I take on e2 with a check, rook takes. Okay. Can I take on c3 and then start attacking this c3 pawn? Let's try doing that and rook to the center. It was not very forcing. So uh, Knight goes to e5. I don't like that. My plan was to go f6 uh, or queen c7. Queen c7 was my plan. But then there's rook c1. Queen c I want to go f6, but then knight g6. Is, that's the problem with the knight. It's always regrouping. 
in such fashion that you cannot attack it. It's always find the loopholes in your position. So let me just try exchanging queens. Okay, f4. Should have expected that one. What do I do with my queen? Let's go queen f5. I don't know why, but maybe I would have f6 move. g4, I would have only move queen h7 or almost only move, yes. Knight f3. And then bishop would attack something. Yeah, I don't like my queen on h7. I want my queen somewhere closer to where the action is happening. Oh, there's alignment of the rooks. My opponent blundered bishop b5. Okay, so how, what is the best way to use it? Let's go bishop b5 now. Yeah, rook f5. A blundered alignment on one diagonal of heavy pieces. That's one of the signs of a tactical motif. Queen h7 or queen f6, which one is better? Queen f6. Although I don't see a significant difference. Just queen has more places to go to from f6. Oh, uh, I'm just thinking generally, not I should be precise in my thinking. You know, it's just knight d3 is obvious defense. So queen g6 should still be winning. But yeah, that was the critical difference. Queen h7 wins the exchange. And now maybe I just win one pawn. And then g file opens up. Okay. Is it with increment? I don't see, why am I not seeing increment? What's the, okay, I'm just, okay, now I go to h7. c4, and now I take, and now I take, take, now d4 pawn. Yeah, that's why I wanted my queen on f6 and the pawn on d4 would definitely fall, but now d5 is possible. Ooh, d5, rook d5, queen d5, that's beautiful. What do I do on d5? That's the problem. I put my queen, God knows where. And now, for example, queen... Okay, rook d1 is no good. Okay, so d5 was a wonderful try for white. And maybe I'm winning anyway, because g4 pawn is hanging. Okay, if I take on d4, I cannot win one of the rooks. So I have queen g6 move, just the forcing move that improves my queen. H3, I have H5 or Queen F6. Both look good to me. Queen F6, Rook E4. I don't see a crushing queen. And now I can take on D4. Now that's it. Now that is it. Okay. Check on B1 and then check on B2. And one of the rooks is saying bye bye. Nice geometry. So go to Chessable and check out my course. I think that's our time. Um, yes, I think it is. Thank you all for watching. Take good care. And check out at least the pick inside video for my course. You can find the link in the description or just go chessable and search my last name or initiative. Okay.